With the first candidate of Godot 4 coming out, I thought I'd talk about my favourite changes, starting with... Occlusion Calling! In 3D games, performance matters a lot. You really want to limit the amount of work your GPU has to do. The problem Godot 3 had was that there wasn't any real way to detect if objects your camera pointed to should be drawn. This meant that despite not being able to see anything behind a wall, the engine would still draw it, wasting resources. Godot 3.4 added portal occlusion, which I never really worked out how to use well. And 3.5 added in shape occlusion, which I made a video about, but honestly, it was a pain to set up. But finally, we have proper occlusion calling, where a bunch of ray casts are sent out, and based on what they hit, they will return data of what actually needs to be drawn. This does come with its own performance cost, but if you're making a level with even the slightest amount of depth, you will experience a large performance increase when your GPU decides not to draw the extra 100,000 polygons that the player doesn't even see. Classes as an export variable. This is something I've wanted since completing my first game jam. The idea is simple. I can create a class with export variables and use them within an export array. You may be able to think of a couple of scenarios where this is useful, but what I've mostly used this for is to spawn large waves of various enemies. Before, I kind of had to hard code the waves if I wanted any sort of variety. But now, I can effectively use classes as my own specialized data type where I can determine what enemy is being spawned, where it's being spawned, how often it's being spawned, and etc. Honestly, if you've ever felt the need to create your own data type, now you can with classes. The tile map revamp. The tile map in Godot 3 kind of sucked, and if you ever watched a Let's Try and Learn Godot video, this feature was inevitably criticized when the person tried to make a 2D project coming from Unity or Game Maker. Well, the new system is significantly better. Not only is it more powerful, but it's significantly more intuitive. I haven't used it a huge amount yet, but it's already a pretty obvious improvement that you should try out yourself. Static typing actually results in a performance improvement. As you may or may not know, GDScript is an interpretive language that will work out what data type you're working with based on the data you put into a variable. You could define this within the code, but it didn't really matter for performance. If you wanted a performance improvement, you would have to recode it in C Sharp or refactor your code. I am a lazy programmer, and it is likely that I won't take advantage of this until I feel like optimization is necessary. But it's definitely a nice thing to have in the optimization toolkit. Hopefully this will help eliminate the somewhat warranted, but often unwarranted criticism towards GDScript's performance. Anything that lets me not have to code in C Sharp is a win in my book. Having a default font. It is really annoying when I'm prototyping to have to find a font, import it, and then drag it and drop it into a label node just to change the size of the font. Well, now there's a default font that can actually be resized. This does seem minor, but it really is a big quality of life improvement. Various additional functions. Once again, quite minor, but I do appreciate new functions like arrays.get underscore random. Before, if you wanted to get a random value within an array, you would have to get the array, get the size of the array, get a random integer between 0 and the array size minus 1, and after that, you could finally get your random value. Now it's just get underscore random. It just makes things quicker and easier to read. Downsides of Godot 4. I guess it's a little bit of a pain to relearn some of the syntax. I'm not sure why we need ampersand export and ampersand on ready compared to just export and on ready, but outside of that, a lot of the naming changes make sense. Sure, it takes a bit to relearn, but it's substantially less cryptic and more consistent, so overall I'd call it an improvement. I first tried Godot with version 2.1 in 2017, and I wasn't that impressed, mostly due to the tutorial content being the answer, just read the docs. I then retried Godot 3.2 in 2020 and fell in love with the engine due to its intuitiveness. Despite that, I still acknowledged its shortcomings, especially in the 3D scape. But with Godot 4 almost being released, I can say that all of my major problems I had with this engine have been solved. Does this mean that the engine is perfect? For some people, absolutely not. But 
For a hobbyist developer, I really only have nitpicks at this point. If you're the type of developer who views themselves as the primary limiting factor when making games, I cannot recommend Godot 4 enough. It's really intuitive once you get the basics, and instead of game dev feeling like a battle between you and the engine, Godot makes game dev fun. If you do want to learn Godot 4, then check out my tutorial series on how to make a Vampire Survivors clone, link in the description.